Hi everyone, Blaze Raider here, and today I'll be showing you um, a quick uh, studio setup which I've used to render out this image of my Jaguar XKRS model. Um, and let's jump right in. Well, here is the studio setup that I've used. Um, I'll just hide this plane. So, as you can see, the floor is just a simple. Um, say a square extruded outwards to produce the floor and then upwards to make the side walls and to this I've added a subsurf modifier of around four um, just so it's a, a smooth backdrop so there's no um, direct shadows or uh, jagged lines anyway in the final image. Now if we go to the camera view right now all right, in the camera view here, you can see the um, how I've got the camera and everything lined up. And if I just unhide the main key light here, um, so the light I've used, or the setup I've used here, is um, an emitting plane with a gradient texture applied to it. So I'll just show you that here with the nodes. So here we go. So it's a it's using an emission uh, node. I'll just come to the top view just to show you that. You can see the gradient of on the emission uh, uh, plane here. So it starts off with uh, soft. So this corresponds directly to the color ramp node used here. So you can see at the beginning here it's um, dark and it's black and then it uh, slowly transitions to white. You can see it comes white and then it fades off to black again. So this um, enables the car to receive uh, a soft fall off into reflection. This just, um, I don't know, just provides a more artistic, uh, better looking render for me, in my uh, opinion. Just uh, let that render out. Now, if I was to remove the color ramp node from here, you'd see the difference it makes straight away and it just doesn't look as nice. There we go. So it's just much too bright, the reflections are too hard. So you can see it's just it's just overblown, the highlights. So with this uh, the color ramp node added to it, The reflections are still bright, however they fall off, they transition to black and you get a smooth fall off here. Um, this actually simulates uh, the soft boxes used in actual studio uh, lighting setups for car models and such, or actual studio uh, lighting setups for cars. So the, the soft boxes usually tend to have a white sheet, uh, semi-transparent, it's not so it tends to be a large white sheet placed over the car with a strong light in one end of it, so around here. And then that falls off and provides a nice soft reflection on the car, which is what I've tried to simulate here, which adds to the realism of the render. Um, one more thing is, I have another plane off to the side here which I've made invisible to the camera, which adds a highlight to the emblem here. So if I just hide this, you'll see how the emblem is hidden. You can't really tell, you can't really see it. So because of that, I added another plane off to the side, off to the, the left of the car, or the right, just to highlight the emblem so you can actually see the Jaguar emblem here, which just, just um, emphasizes the emblem. And that is the main setup. The studio backdrop is um, 
Let's see, it's just a, a diffuse mixed with a glossy. A very slight uh, glossy glossiness to the, the floor. And the car's material is something I've uh, developed for, since my last car model. Um, so it's got really simple input. So you, you just choose the paint color and the gloss color and you adjust the settings here. I'll just show you this right now. If you want to recreate it. <clears throat> so you can see what it consists of. So you have one diffuse which is the color of the car paint. One diffuse node which is mixed with a, a, glossy, a glossy node, a glossy BSDF. So this just, um, that first glossy node adds a, uh, a sort of like a glow to the highlights. It's not really emphasized here though. Um, that is the intention of it. You see how the, how it's not a sharp reflection. If I was to decrease this glossy spread, you'll see, actually I'll just increase this just to show you what it looks like. So point 0.2. You see how it looks much more metallic and the, the highlights have have come down to around here as you can see from the top. Got like a highlight here. Now if I decrease this back to around 0.1, see how that's reduced. And if I even come down to around 0 0.05 which was the original value, it's even much less now so the car looks more uh, I wouldn't say matte, but less glossy, less metallic. Um, okay, so that's the first um, glossy node. Now it's mixed with another glossy node here, so the first one and then the second one here. And this is just the, the main highlight, this, this adds the main highlight to the car's uh, model here, the main reflection. So. As you can see, the inputs are glossy roughness and gloss color. So if I was to change the gloss color, uh, let's say make it blue, you can have a blue, a blue shine, a blue metallic color to it. As you can see, the reflection is now blue rather than white. Just uh, show you this. There you go. Complete blue reflection. You can probably use this for making uh, different kinds of. Um, metallic effects on the car so you might have pearlescent paints but I tend to just use white so that is um, the main setup I'll just show you the node one more time just in case you want to make your, make this in your own time yep okay now rendering here is not, it's not the final complete step. You don't just get uh, an awesome looking render in one uh, press of F12. To make this render pop, to make this image pop, you, you need to, you need to go into compositing. It is probably one of the most essential things to rendering out something that looks extremely realistic. I wouldn't say extremely though, quite realistic and quite appealing to the eye. So right now this um, this image just looks bland. You've got a dark floor and white reflections. It's almost black and white despite the red. And this uh, this tends to not uh, appeal that much to the, the great audience. So once this is rendered out, and I've already rendered this out before, I take this into the compositing and you can see how that's made a, a much greater difference. So I'll go from initial and just just watch this switch. See how that that is the final that's the render which comes out this is the raw render and the final render after compositing nodes compositing is this is the final image so just let that composite and there you go. See how the floor now has a slight bluish tinge the highlights are glowing and everything just looks much better than this bland near black and white image. The main compositing starts here where I multiply the image with ambient occlusion. So this is the ambient occlusion pass. And I tend to use a color ramp 
because I mean occlusion for some reason when I multiply the image it I don't know before um, used to ambient occlusion pass used to have uh, RGB values greater than one so it increases in it brightens the image for some reason I'm not sure why as you can see if I just enable and this uh, mute and unmute the color ramp node you see how here is just gets much brighter I don't I don't think this is how it should be I'm not sure so by using the color ramp node um, that just uh, clips the RGB values from uh, 0 to 1 and it just uh, I don't know it maintains maintains a, a correct output for me at least in my eyes so after multiplying the image by the ambient occlusion pass I then add the emission pass which is there is no emission here so it's irrelevant this is just the basic setup I use for pretty much all my um, all my renders and I just alter it uh, dependingly and this adds the environment uh, pass to it this is just to, just to complete the whole image now the main part of um, the compositing setup here is the tone mapping node now, I believe this gives the most realism to the image it, it does this by flattening out the image and it gives you more um, more color space to work with. So you can see how it makes everything flatter. If I was to go to the final output here and I just let this load. If I was to disable the tone mapping node you see how it's just too bright. The highlights are too bright and the the shadows are too dark, much too dark. So by using the tone mapping node I bring uh, the highlights and the shadows back into a workable range and this just emulates the way your eye would see this car at the moment it's rendered in so your eye tends to see a, a much greater dynamic range than um, than which is rendered throughout this so by using the tone mapping node you can get back that dynamic range so you have more to work with now after that I've just taken the the initial output here, darkened it just to get the much, um, just to filter out the highlights, and I blur this out, and I add it. I actually screen it back onto the uh, the tone mapped image. So if you look closely, you can see a slight glow around the highlights. I'll just mute this and I'll mute this so you can see the effect. Look here. You can see how it's added on. And after this, I color balance it just to give the, uh, the image a more artistic appeal. I've um, made the, 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 the. So over here it's gamma, but this usually uh, applies for the shadows, uh, mid tones, and the highlights. So the highlights I've given a slight yellow tinge, and the shadows and the the mid tones are uh, you can see it's come like a slight slightly blue color so if I just disable this and enable it once again you can see the difference so it goes from yellow warm colors to much bluer colder color and for me I just you know, I just I, I just that's how I like it now uh, any render engine so with cycles cycles is a path tracer and it tends to output a very clean image after many passes so this image right now is I think it was at rendered at 1000 passes and you can see how everything just looks very smooth and clean however this is not the case in real life so in real life a camera would have some imperfections and to and some noise so to add this back in I overlay the image with a noise texture which is just a procedural noise from Blender so you'll see the effect now see how it's just added some more grit to the render here I'll show you it's really most evident in the highlights so as I disable it the window becomes much smoother and over here is much smoother as well but when I enable the noise 
you see it's become much more gritty and it breaks up the image a bit and just just looks at uh, it looks much more real adds more realism to the image over here I add a um, some dust and scratches to the final image just to break it up a little bit more so it's like it's like noise but it has uh, more variation uh, this is just an image text, uh, texture of uh, some dust and scratches and I only add this selectively to areas with um, so let me see so yeah here we go so I don't add it to the highlights I add it only to the areas which are darker than the highlights so everything excluding the highlights and to do that I've got the initial image here I use a greater than node to uh, select uh, or filter out all the pixels with a value greater than 0.415 and I invert this to select everything else so that's everything which is less than 4.415 sorry 0.415 thinking about that I could probably just use a less than node anyway and then I blur this to create a mask so you can see how it's just blurred just so it's not as uh, sharp then I multiply this uh, by 0.1 just to add a little bit more gray to, to it so there you go now here is the uh, dust and scratches image and this uh, I use a dodge node here and I'm not sure if it's really evident but you might be able to tell if I turn it on and off let's just see if I mute this yep. it slightly uh, increases the brightness but I'm not sure if it makes that, great, uh, that much of a difference it's just something I've been using for a while and I don't get rid of it I tend to reuse my node setups because they they all do the same thing pretty much anyway now after all that compositing all the everything that's been applied to the image it tends to look a little soft around the edges so to fix that I use a sharpen node and that just brings out more of the textures used so if we just uh, focus in this the tire side wall here if I mute this you can see how everything just looks uh, softer and doesn't pop as much but once I sharpen it you can see how it's much more um, what's the word enhanced and just looks much well it just looks sharper and the final touch to this image is a final RGB curves uh, node to just brighten the image and make it more vibrant and appealing. So that is my node setup. I I tend to reuse this this entire node setup for most of my car renders, just altering um, color balance node here and there and some of these values, some of these values for the ambient occlusion. But that is basically it. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, I want to say tutorial. Here's a short overview. Thank you for watching.